Hello, my name is Sammy Valencia, and today I'll be giving a presentation on the RJ45 connector. The RJ45 connector, you'll see a picture of in the middle of our screen here, is nothing more than the plug at the end of an Ethernet cable. It is an 8P, 8C connector, modular connector. Uh, the 8C stands for 8 position, and the 8C is 8 contact. And what this means is that there are basically 8 pins that dig into the 8 wires within the cable itself. And RJ, this is an RJ45, stands for Registered Jack. And Registered Jack is a system of standardizing the various connectors used within telephones. Uh, the RJ45 connector is most commonly used with twist repair cables such as Cat5. And these can be either shielded twist repair or unshielded twist repair. And they're used in networking computers. So they transmit digital signals between various devices on a network. RJ45 connectors are very frequently used with Ethernet cables, um, which are used for networking computers together, uh, connecting a computer to a modem, or even a router, or connecting a router to a modem. Um, if you look at the picture here of our Ethernet cable, you'll see that the RJ45 is the connector at the end of a Cat5 cable, and a Cat5 cable is usually terminated at either end with an RJ45 connector. Now, an Ethernet cable has really only two essential parts, the connector and the cable itself. Uh, lots of cables, though, you will also see a boot hiding behind the connector, and what the boot does is this little bump here helps protect the clip at the back of the connector, and the clip holds the cable into the corresponding Ethernet jack or Ethernet port. Uh, a lot of times a boot will be called a, a cap or a boot cap or a boot protector and the connector can be either an RJ45 plug, RJ45 connector, or just the plug. And the cable can be a twisted pair cable, um, either shielded or unshielded, and it's generally part of an Ethernet cable. And it can be wired either to be a patch or a crossover cable. Now here we're looking at the I.O. port at the back of the computer and highlighted in yellow you'll see an Ethernet jack or Ethernet port. Um, you'll notice that it is wide and rectangular, and you'll also notice the typical networking symbol of the three different computers connected here through a wire, and the Ethernet jack accepts the ATHC modular connector that's known as the RJ45 connector. Uh, essentially, it's an Ethernet cable that's plugged in the Ethernet port, and the RJ45 is a little clear bit of plastic that gets shoved in there. Now if you look at this picture in the middle here, you see another Ethernet port sitting right next to the RJ11 port. And the RJ11, the cable here, the connector, looks very similar to the RJ45. It's just a little smaller. You'll notice it's also more square than the rectangular RJ45. Now the RJ11 is mostly used with older telephones like dial-up internet and old dial-up modems. And the RJ45 is more commonly used with broadband internet, computers, and networking. And the RJ45 is wider, rectangular, and has eight now to make an Ethernet cable, it's a really simple process. You just need a crimping tool um, to connect the two RJ45 connectors at either end of your twisted pair cable. Uh, here we have a box of Cat5 cable, and basically you take the end of the cable, you yank it out of the box to a desired length, you cut it, uh, you strip it, shove the wires in your little uh, connector here, and you clip it down. If you look at your crimper, you'll notice there's an 8P slot for your RJ45 connector and a 6P slot for your RJ11 connector. And here we have the six steps involved for creating your Ethernet cable. First you put the boot on the cable, then you strip the outer casing off, and then you take the four twisted pair of wires and you untwist them. You line up in the order for the type of cable you want to make, whether it's a crossover or straight through type of cable. Then you put the wires in the plug and you crimp the plug down. And this will stab the different pins into the corresponding uh, contact or uh, conductors. A few side notes when creating a connector. Uh, the first and foremost is that you want to make sure that you slide the outer casing of the cable deep into the RJ45 plug itself. You can see the blue here going through the, the plug. And then when you crimp it down, it really bites into the outer casing and helps hold those wires in place. And this way, when the, when if the wire ever twists or bends or gets tugged on, 
a lot of that pressure gets applied to the outer casing itself and not the wires that are connected to your pins here. Uh, this one was done really poorly. You can actually see the, the gap here. Even if you put a plug or a cap over it, or a boot over it, there we go, then you're going to have a lot of strain on these wires and they might get tugged out of the pin here. Uh, another thing is if you end up with excess wire hanging out at the end of your uh, RJ45s, you can just cut that off and you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, you usually won't see that though. So in conclusion, RJ45 is an Ethernet plug. Uh, RJ stands for registered jack. And then in Ethernet cables, or Ethernet cables we use in networking, we think a port is rectangular, not square. And the RJ45 is generally used with twisted duct cables. And here are my sources. All right, thank you very much.